Hey guys, welcome back. Jason's here. In this video, we will go on by introducing how to connect and configure your trunks. Trunks are basic lines that you purchase from the service provider, through which you can connect your local telephone system to the public telecommunication network built by the service provider. Along with the public numbers for your trunks, your system can actually communicate with the outside world, receive calls from your collaborators, or call your provider in another country. By this video, we will show you how to set up trunks in PBX and how are we going to make it function correctly. Alright, now let's just get to the configuration. In our PBX system, we support five types of trunk, analog, PRI, BRI, mobile trunk, and SIP trunk. We will go through the configuration of all these trunks. First, let's just talk about analog trunk, which is also known as the PST online. It is very common all over the world because it's economical and easy to set up. To connect with PST online, you will need the O2 module installed in the S-Series PBX. And then, the corresponding interface on the front panel will function as an FXO port, and you can directly insert your PST line to it. Since it's all analog, the most important thing here is the physical connection. Once connected, your PBX will recognize it with no doubt. You can go to the main menu, find PBX monitor, and check the trunk status. Here you can see the FXO port is connected fine. If there's a problem, PBX will indicate so. Now, let's back to trunk settings. Once again, it is a pure analog, as we were mentioned. There are not much things we need to do besides physical connection. Well, you can surely change the name of this trunk so that you can identify it easily in the trunk list. And, if you have issues with the volume received or sent out, adjust it here. Rx refers for receiving, and Tx is for sending. Instead of changing it by percentage, you can click on Custom directly and set the volume. The volume range is from minus 30 to 12 dB, and then we will need to go to the caller ID settings in advance to ensure that our PBX can receive the caller ID sent by the service provider. We will need to confirm that our trunk comes with the caller ID service first, and then we just need to get correct signaling and start type from the service provider and put them in. Then, we have an E1 line. To have the E1 set up, you must have an S100 or S300 with an AX30 expansion card installed. E1 configuration is apparently more complicated, but you don't have to know every detail about all these parameters. In most cases, the default setting will do the job. But if you have any problem with your E1 connection and making phone calls, you can go back to trunk status to see what exactly happened here. Either it's disconnected to the service provider or fails to register. If it's not functioning correctly, just comes out with your service provider about the parameters, especially the signaling. You can set up DOD here as well. We will be talking about it, including what do all these parameters mean and uh, what role do they play in the intercommunication with the public telephony network in the following videos. Now, let's look at the mobile trunk. To support mobile trunks, we have three kinds of module for GSM, WCDMA, and 4G LTE network. In other words, we have 2G, 3G, and 4G covered. Let's take 4G as an example. Normally, when the SIM card has been inserted into the module, as long as there is signal coverage, the PBX will be connected with the service provider just as the SIM card in the cell phone. One thing you will need to be aware is the pin code. If it is required, you will be asked for the pin code to activate the SIM card. And then, just click on Save. Your mobile trunk is available now. Now, let's continue with SIP trunk setting. Different from the previously mentioned trunks, you don't need any additional hardware for it. 
What you will be ready to do is creating a zip trunk account here and register it to the service provider. Click on Add to start a new zip trunk. You can actually create three types of zip trunk here register trunk, peer trunk, and account trunk. Let's look at the register trunk first. To make the register trunk works, you will need to put in the exact information offered by the service provider into this page. Major thing here is the host and IP address, as well as the domain. These two parameters will point you to the server of your SIP trunk service over provider side. After that, we have username, password, and authentication name. Put them in. You will be verified as legit account and successfully register to the service provider. Caller ID number and caller ID name are for the caller ID shown when making outbound calls via this trunk. From user is actually very important. If you miss it, you might have problem with outgoing calls for lack of identity. Put in the registration name of your SIP account. In most cases, it will be your landline number. Comparing with the register trunk, you need far less information for setting a peer trunk. You will notice this when you get the SIP trunk. Peer trunk can also be used to connect with other PBXs. Local and remote connections are both supported. We will be talking about this in the following videos. As for account trunk, basically it is specifically designed for a connection between two PBXs. We're going to configure it as this. First, let's set the general device. Create a new SIP trunk by choosing the account trunk. Name it as Euro. And we will have the username, password, and authentication name. Please do remember, these are the information more than important for our following job. The rest of parameters, caller ID setting, as we were discussing on the register trunk, will be the same. Now, let's do the job on our associate device. Go accessing in the system of the other device. Activate the trunk setting. We will need to choose the type of register trunk this time. And name it as well. Enter the host name and IP and dormy with no doubt. Now, time for us to make use of the information more than important. Just enter the username, password, and authentication name. Don't forget from user, either. As for the caller ID setting, basically, it will be the landline number, as we were discussed. Well now, we could just start making use of our account trunk to connect these two PBXs. Besides, we could also have multiple SIP register trunks by importing a template. Click on the import. We would just need to upload it from local storage of our computer. And there's a template if we need it as well. After all that we've done, don't forget to click on save. You can go to the trunk status in PBX Monitor to check whether the registration is working. Alright guys, that was all for the video, thank you so much for watching. Please do remember to subscribe if you like this video, and for more A-Star updates, just follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And hopefully to see you guys in the next video.